In today's ThinkScript tutorial, I'll show you how to take a simple candlestick pattern and turn that into a powerful reversal signal using 10 simple lines of code. Now, it doesn't matter if you know nothing about ThinkScripting, this is a beginner-friendly tutorial. Let me start by first showing you the pattern that we're going to be turning into code. I have three examples of this pattern on a chart of Microsoft. You can see them right here. It's a fairly basic pattern and one which if you've been trading for any amount of time, you've probably seen tons and tons of times, both on daily timeframe charts along with intraday timeframes for plotting some of these key reversal points. We're going to take this pattern right here and we're going to pull out observations that we can turn into actual code. We'll write that code and by the end of this video, you'll know how to go from just recognizing this candlestick pattern to actually writing code which plots these arrows automatically for you. Now along this journey, there's a few different things that you'll learn. The first and the most obvious, how to turn candlestick patterns into code. We're clearly going to be doing that with the example I just showed you. The second, which is a trick along the way, will be how to measure candle wicks, both the upper and the lower wick. You'll see a trick to go about doing that. And finally, for those of you that are new to thing scripting, you'll learn how to combine multiple Boolean conditions, multiple things that need to be true in one final variable, which plots those arrows that I showed you. All right, with that out of the way, let's get started with writing some code. Now, inside of my Thinkorswim platform, I'm going to start by clicking the studies icon here, move this to the right so we can see an example of this pattern. And then I'm going to click create so we have our code editor here. Now let's start by pulling out some of the observations that we see for this green candle. I'll start with the most obvious, which is the fact that it's a green candle. So here I'm going to start by saying def green candle. So we're declaring this variable green candle and here, let's say that this variable is true when the close price is greater than our open price, suggesting we have a green candle. Now let's make sure that we've done this correctly by plotting the output. I'll say plot signal is equal to green candle. And I'm also going to add a declare lower up here so that we see this indicator plotting on our lower panel chart. I'll click OK, apply, and this allows us to get started. We now have our indicator plotting on that lower panel chart because we wrote declare lower. And you'll see that the values here go between zero and one, meaning false and true. Now, every single time this line shoots up to one, meaning true, that's because we have green candles right here. Now, so far, we have a lot of ones on our chart and our goal is to reduce that to a manageable amount only when this pattern is true. So let's start to get a little bit more narrow in terms of what we're looking to pull out here. So I'm going to pull up that code one more time and let's pull out our next observation. To me, the next obvious thing that stands out is that we have a lower low on this green candle. You can see that right here. Our candle dips slightly below before coming right back in reversing and then closing green for the day. So that's another piece of observation we can pull out. I'll say def lower low and our low price of our current candle must be less than our low price from that previous candle. Now using that, we can also see that our previous candle here is red. So we can combine that into this condition here. Let's say our low price needs to be lower and our close price on that previous bar must be less than the open price suggesting we had a red candle. We can also change this variable name from lower low to previous candle low as the name of this. So it's a little bit broader of a variable name. And I'm going to add that to our signal. Now what we've done is we've said, hey, we want to see all of the places in which we have the green candle condition true, meaning we have a green candle on the current candle and this previous candle low variable, which has two different conditions. The first being we have a lower low than our previous candle. And the second being that previous candle is a red candle. So both of these need to be true. Now, if I click apply, notice that the number of ones dramatically reduced here. So we're getting closer and closer to identifying this candle. You can see that this candle still continues to plot true, but we also have the likes of some other candles, which we may not necessarily want to see as part of this pattern. 
So let's continue to get a little bit narrower. The next thing that stands out to me is this wick right down here. This very clearly has a nice wick to the downside inside of this green candle. How do we identify that? Well, let's start by first separating the upper and the lower wick, and then we can make some relative comparison. So here I'll say def upper wick, and to calculate our upper wick, since we already know this is a green candle, we can simply take our high price and subtract that from our close price for this candle since we know that it closed above where it opened. So here I can say high minus close. And then for our lower wick, I can say def lower wick. And our lower wick is going to be our open price, which is right here. And we're going to subtract that from our low price of this candle. So I'll say open minus low. Now, what we can do is create a condition and I'll create that outside. So we'll say def wick condition. And we can say here that our lower wick must be greater than or equal to, let's say four times the size of our upper wick. So now what we're doing is we're saying, hey, we want this long lower wick compared to the upper wick. We want to make sure that this is a green candle and we want to make sure that our pre uh, current low is less than our previous candle's low and that previous candle was a red candle. Those are all of the conditions that we have. Let me get rid of some of the spacing here. I'll click apply. We'll click, oh, we forgot to add in this wick condition here. So we'll add that to our signal variable. Now I'll click apply one more time. We can see that the number of ones has dramatically reduced on our chart. Now this is the kind of pattern that we're looking for. If we take a look at some instances when this has been one, so here's the beginning of the 2023 here. Here's an example of the type of candlestick pattern we're looking for. If we take a look at another example, this is the highlighted one. We're still seeing that's true. So this is what we're looking for, confirming what we were hoping to build. Here's another example. Here, all of our conditions are being met and you can see it's not doing as perfect of a job as pinpointing that reversal. And that also helps to illustrate the fact that this is most definitely not a perfect reversal signal but you'll also be able to very quickly highlight when this particular set of rules has triggered, but maybe not giving you the exact reversal signal you were looking for. So just like that, we've now taken a set of conditions, a set of observations, we've turned them into code, and we've confirmed that this is plotting where we would like. Now, right now, this is plotting as lines right down here on the lower panel. We're seeing it either as zero or one. It's not as clean as we would like. So let's now make that a little bit cleaner. I'm going to get rid of the declare lower. We're going to turn signal into a buy arrow. Now, since this right here is a Boolean condition, meaning it either returns only one or zero, we can use the Boolean painting strategy. Let me show you how to do that. Here we can say strategy, and we can say paintingstrategy.boolean arrow up. And since this value is either a one or a zero, anytime this value is a one, this right here will automatically paint an up arrow every time that's one at the lower end of that candle. So let me show you what that looks like. I'll say, okay, apply. You should notice now that lower panel indicator has gone. Instead, it's now an upper panel indicator. And we have these arrows that are plotting on our chart every single time we have this reversal condition being met. Let's also make these arrows just a little bit bigger so they're easier to see. So I'll say set line weight, and here I'll give this a weight of five, click apply, and you should notice that these arrows are now much easier to see. So that's how you go from a very simple candlestick pattern and turn that into code, pulling out some key observations testing each observation along the way through incremental testing and iterating that however you need so that you finally get to this signal variable right down here, which encapsulates all of these different conditions and outputs one nice clean arrow. You can now use this to either plug into say an automated trading order, into a scan, into an indicator, into a back tester. There's a lot of different things that you can do by simply translating this candlestick pattern. 
I hope you found this video helpful. For those of you looking to get a little bit more into think scripting, I think this is another fun way to turn some of your observations into something that you can actually use in your everyday trading. Take care, everyone. Good luck trading, and I'll see you in our next update.